nothing ever came easy for me. And I don't, I'm, I'm glad. Right. When these media stories and stuff that published, like, are, are we to believe this stuff? Because, you know, we do this, you know, for a living, but how do we know that all the stuff that we see, you know, is, is credible? Talk about like the it's TMZ. Not, it's Talk not. Talk about it's that. It's never going to be credible. Right. Nothing is, it's not going to be credible. It's not credible. You can't, because it, you got to remember, Eddie, Eddie said it once the best to me. He said the press is like a, a hungry monster. When it doesn't get what it wants, it will make up and create what it wants. Mm. That's exactly what they are. I'll give you an example. Let's take about the, the uh, incident that I just had at Brown. Mm. Uh, I, went, I, went, I, I walked away, went to the counter. The lady said, okay, your credit card don't work. But I said, okay, listen, I'm looking at another one. She said, okay, fine. But I said, well, I have to stand in this line when I come back. Oh, shit. I said, well, I have to stand in line. Yes, sir. She, said, no, you won't to, she said, no, you won't have to stand in line again inside, but you will outside. I'm like, well, shit, that's the most biggest line. So she said, oh, I, can, I, I can do it about it. So I went on the left. I came back later. I actually called the police to go back with me. And it's called a civil standby. A civil standby. I called the police, asked for a civil standby to go with me because I told them what happened. So we go back and, and the manager, which is a never told, me and the manager, we're really good. We're really close now because I'm going to tell you what, what we're doing now. But she was really tough. And she was like, and I said, because every morning I would go there and I got to be honest with you, I give her so much hell about the line, how she wasn't good and it's taking too long and she don't know what she's doing and blah, blah, blah. So this time when I go back, I walk straight to front. She said, you know, you can't walk in the front. You got to get in line. I said, because I'm, I'm not here. She refused to take the money. She did not want to take the money because she can't decide to come back and pay. But she is absolutely right. I have, I have fans who are like upset at her. Listen to me. You can't decide to go and come back and pay whenever you're wrong, you, when you want. She was right. I was wrong. But what we're doing now is turning this into an amazing thing. Ralph's and I are now are going to give away thousands of dollars in Ralph's $50 uh, 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 Ralph gift card. Um, actors who are sick and shut in, who can't really do it for themselves, for homeless and for elderly. So Ralph, myself, and we're getting ready to do it. It's going to end, and, and Leah, uh, um, um, we're going to do a huge giveaway. Shoot, this thing is still about to, it feel like it's about, my phone is not charged. We're doing a huge giveaway, and it's going to go to first responders, actors who don't really have anything. There's a lot of actors in the old folks' home who can't get out, who don't have enough. So we're going to turn this into an a, a opportunity to, to help others using Ralph's gift cards. So we're going to turn this into something really big and spectacular. I'm going to be posting very soon um, how everybody can get involved and help. So we're going to use this uh, Ralph situation, working with Ralph to give away thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gift cards to um, the people at the hospital, because you gotta remember, there's some, some of those people who are single mothers, who are mm. working all that long in the hospital, they don't have time to even get groceries. They don't have time. With... These people really, really need us right now. So we're going to turn this situation into a opportunity to give. And I'm going to ask you guys, because I'm gonna, I got your number, I'm gonna send you, and I want you to help post so we can get donations to help all of the people who really and truly need it. I've had so many people offer this. They were believing all that hype and they were offering this. So I just turned that into giving and buy Ralph's gift cards. And we're going to be posting all the information for it so you'll be able to see it. Look out for my Facebook. Look out for, uh, look here too, because I'm going to be sending them the information and we're going to show you how you guys can get involved because everybody, we are all in this together. All right. Damn. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some of your claims to fame. Now, you got Life, you played Biscuit, you had Pretty Ricky on Martin and Joanna Man. Now, we talk a lot on this podcast about black men wearing dresses. You happen to be one of the most famous to wear a dress being Joanna Man. How do you feel about that? How did you feel walking into that role? How do you feel now about it? And do you feel as though it puts a bad stigma on the black male um, persona? Okay. I think that because black men have been so marginalized and black men have been so uh, stigmatized and all of that, I think that we do have to watch out for that. But you gotta remember, I, it, it depends on what that the person is. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? Oh, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, 
it, I think that that it depends on what the role is. Like, you remember, Juana Man was a guy dressing up as a as a woman so he could continue his career and he could do that. Now, if somebody would have told me, you know, uh, like right now, I don't have a problem. With, I'm a Christian, and I believe what God said, and I treat everybody equal. I try to love everybody. I I, I, I firm believe in that a, a marriage between a man and a woman. But I believe it's not my position and it's not anybody's position to tell anybody what they should do with their life. God said this, love thy neighbor as thyself. He never once said, love thy straight neighbor. He said, love thy neighbor. So if your neighbor is a gay, you're supposed to love them and judge not that you may not be judged also. So it's our job to love people and not judge them, even though we may have feel in a certain way and, and as, a, as a religious purposes. I treat everybody the same. I love everybody. But if I had to get an address and do something like really, really nasty, I wouldn't do it. But Juana Man was really, really, let me tell you how I got that role. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Will Smith had told me for years, you got to stop playing golf, Miguel. You got to stop playing golf, Miguel. You got to start playing golf, Miguel. That's where the big role. The first time I ever went on a golf course, ever, I took him up, this is years later, I took him up on his word. And I went out and, and I hired a, uh, an instructor. And the first day I'm out hitting, this guy taps me on his shoulder and said, hey, Hey, my name is Jesse Vaughn. I'm a director. I'm doing this movie called Juana Man, and I would like you to come in and, and, and screen test for it. And that's how I got Juana Man. I went there the next day, and we had flex, and everybody was all up in there. And I had no clue what even was about. Mm. And I just, and what? They wanted to talk to us. And they said, because when I got there, I remember looking down in the chair, and I saw this girl, and she was like, beautiful. I'm like, whoa. And he was like, nigga, stop playing. I'm like, what are you talking? Holy shit, it was flex. Cause they were making me look like a girl and a guy he had his eyes tweezed and i'm like shoot maybe i should have did something because i just came from home it was like they was like they were like into it and flex can play basketball damn near as good as michael jordan back then no doubt about it mm -hmm. absolutely 100 percent 30 40 50 a game scott everything flex was that good so when i went into the producers they wanted to talk to us i spent my entire 30 minutes trying my best to tell them how incredibly lucky they would get if they had flex in this role. I never, I totally drew a blank about, you know, dude, what are you doing? I was just in there going, dude, have you seen flex? I saw him in the dude. Have you, have you ever watched him play? And I kept going on. And then I did it the second meeting and then the executive said, can I ask you a question? He said, why would you be in here trying to give somebody else the role? And I, that was the first time I ever thought about it. I was like, oh, I, I didn't know I was giving it to him. I was just telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. I had no clue. But when it came down to it, they did the screen test. I ended up with the role. Joanna, man, I had no clue how I was going to do the voice for months because I got it like four months and I had to go to training. And for months, I'm going in the mirror going, oh, hi, Joanna. I was trying to say these voices because I didn't want it to sound like, her to sound like a, a, a transvestite. So I kept doing it. I couldn't figure it out. I go, you know what? It is what it is. Whatever happens on the come out the first day, that's what I'm going to use the rest of the movie. So I go to Charlotte, we shot in Charlotte. I'm there about. Looks like, you speak, can you hear me? We still hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Can you continue on. We can hear you. Hello. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He blacked out of there. All right, he'll probably jump back in. Yeah, that was that was great, man. I definitely had a few more on one, you know, um, questions in regard. Um, oh yeah, you know, to that we we'll dig a little bit deeper into some of the other things that. Uh, that's a great question that you asked, Sam. Man, um, definitely, definitely. Yeah, looking forward to it. I'm glad he's being as candid as he is and and giving us the back story on Joanna, man. But like you said, oh God, definitely got some more questions involving that. Is concerned, um, in particular Hollywood. And yeah. Is that something yeah. that Hollywood? kind of looks for when they look for the male actors is that something that they put on them in your opinion brandon t jackson spoke yeah. about it some other people and look like he's back here that he definitely awesome. can uh, answer that for you brother sam and we're back on the hip-hop uncensored podcast with miguel nunez man um can you hear us brother yeah but why my camera ain't working oh there we go can it's, you see me oh yeah. there we go we back brother we back appreciate you okay all right okay good so where was i uh charlotte north carolina filming a duana man Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good to go. Okay. So anyway, so now I had no clue what I was going to do the voice. So I get there and I'm about two hours ahead and then nobody's there. And it's just me and the makeup lady. And they got a big light and no one's there yet. 
and I'm sitting in the chair, and this little AD girl comes up and goes, hi, excuse me, would you like some sweet tea? I went, oh my God, that's it. All I gotta do is make a country and then you won't be able to tell. Oh my God, and that was God too. At the last minute, she came in there and gave me that voice. And she was the reason that I had that voice. I think that was probably the most fun I've ever had in my life. Um, life was also a lot of fun. When I did Friday the 13th, part five, taking a shit, getting killed, I was still homeless. When I did Return to <laughs> yeah. the Living Dead, Return to the Living Dead, I was rushing to the set, still homeless. They didn't know this. Uh, but you got to do what you got to do. A lot of people are afraid to make to take the chance. They're afraid to, to risk something. Listen to me. With great promise comes with great rewards. You got to really work for what you want. No one is going to give you anything. Period. With that said, do you feel as though there's agenda in Hollywood to put black men in dresses? Because you hear we have conversations. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, not so not speak all. speak on that if you don't mind. Because the day no, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, Jackson. Keep going. What were you saying? No, I'll say because there's been a number of actors you've heard Dave Chappelle talk about in the past. Brandon T. Jackson, who played in Big Mama's House, who Martin Lawrence spoke on it about how he seemed. It seemed Martin Lawrence did it with Big Mama. He did it with Big Mama's House. Uh, 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 um, Tyler Perry did it. I did it. And there was somebody else that did it. Um, Robin Williams did it. Um, mm -hmm. um, 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 what's the guy named? The Verma Tootsie did it. Uh, 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 Some Like It Hot did it with all the three of them. The, the Brat Pack did it. Larry Johnson. Um, Huh? Larry Johnson, the basketball player. Oh, big mom. Oh, yeah, grandmama. Grandmama. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. grandmama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think. I just think. No, I don't think. I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think there are any, any, any. I don't think there's any, any plot or plan with it. I just think those are just great characters that people thought about and tried to capitalize on and made the move. Period. Think what. Look what Tyler Perry did. Tyler Perry is. Tyler Perry is should be a national black treasure. Let me tell you why. Tyler Perry is, did the same thing I did. Tyler Perry, in the beginning, was going out on auditions and auditioning. He wasn't getting in the roles, wasn't coming the way he wanted. So you know what he did? He created his own way. He didn't sit around and complain about it. He didn't sit around and talk about the black man in Hollywood. They ain't doing this for me. You know what I'm saying? White man, he ain't doing any of that. He found out what was the situation, and he worked it out and he created his own avenue. And that's exactly what we have to do every single day of our life. Create our own. Believe in ourselves. That's that's the, pretty much the success motto in my book. Because you can never fail as long as you continue trying. You will die trying. But if you, if you continue trying and never get up, you can never fail. You just die trying. Absolutely. Now, I heard a few videos. I've seen it. I haven't seen the video coming to fruition yet but i think you talked about it maybe as early as a year ago is juana man two in the works are you still doing that yes. Or the table yes we are hold on one. Okay. Okay. Plug, plug yes it is okay cool cool so he took a little break you know what i mean great great second i'm like the way that he broke that down to, yeah. uh, this evening definitely man we in the building right now with miguel nunez jr you know what i mean great actor producer I, I'm writer not, I'm, not, I'm not playing no more basketball though are you no. not balling? <laughs> Did you want to go old now to do that shit? <laughs> Hell to the no. That's them, them days over. It's a great story, though. It's a great story we're working with. You want me to take the story? Yeah. Yeah, let me share it with story. the people. Share it with the people. Uh, should I tell you the story? Okay, I'm going to tell you the story that we're working with. Okay, you see Jamal Jeffries. He's at the bar. He's hanging out at the bar, still disheveled, still looking a little fly, kind of like me. Um, <laughs> so now uh, this dude standing next to him looking at him at the bar. He's drinking. He's, hey man, did you used to be Jamal Jeffries? He said, I'm still Jamal Jeffries, motherfucker. <laughs> so, then he, so, so then you look over and they start to come. These girls, the waitresses start coming by with the candles and all of these candles and all the big ass bottles of uh, crystal and everything. And I'm like, what's going on there? And I want the biggest, sexiest. I want a girl that's at least 200 pounds, sexy, fine, beautiful, big woman. And she's over there, and I go, so what's going on over there? Oh, you know who that? That's Shaquita Bishop. She just hit the $575 million uh, a lottery, uh, Atlanta lottery. I'm like, okay, but now you want to see Jamal. Well, you're about to see him. So now I go, she's, no, oh, don't mess with him. Her boyfriend ain't no joke. So I go over there, <laughs> and her boyfriend is um, uh, is no joke. So anyway, don't matter. I ain't worrying about her boyfriend. So the next thing you know, cut to me and her in her hotel room working it out. And so then her boyfriend come knocking on the door. Hey, hey. 
what's going on? He comes in there. I jump out the back door. I'm going to make it quick. I'm not going to tell you everything. I jump out the back window. I got my clothes in my, in my hand. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm hiding behind a, a, a dumpster. Next thing I know, I look around inside. Two police are shaking down this drug dealer for cash. They end up shooting him and taking all of his cash. I see it. I move back, try to keep from them seeing me. They hear me knock something over. They start chasing me. They think I did. I'm like, what the fuck? They got suspect. I'm like, what the fuck you mean suspect? I'm running down the alley. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I run up to this wall and I'm standing at this wall. And I said, dear God, please, 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 God. Don't let, if you get me out of this, I, I'll never do anything wrong again. Just then the door opens behind me. And there's a guy comes out. He goes, Ramon. And I go, what? He goes, Ramon, you're late. And I look by and see the cops coming. I'm like, you're, you're Ramon, right? And I go, yes. And then he, we walk inside. And turn out it's a, a Lakala son of a bitch. Bastard. It's a it's a Lakaja Fali show. Mm. Well, hold on. What? I'm doing two meetings. Anyway, uh, it's a Lakaja Fali show. I'm on stage now, I'm kind of made up and I'm dressing, but I don't know the moves. The cops come in the front door, they're looking around. Now I make a bad move, my wig fall off, they see me, and I'm out the back door, they chasing me again. I'm running, I'm running, Lord, Lord, Lord. I see a car parked on the next to the street, next to the ATM. I jump in the car, I duck down, and the cops go running by. Right at that point, this big German lady jumps in and said, Margaret? And I go, yeah, yeah, yes. She said, oh, let's go, I was about to pick you up. So now we're going cross country, here's the story. We're going cross country. She's uh, in from Germany. She's just taken over a girls' reformatory school as the athletic director. We get into an accident. She's going to be in there for a while. I switch up our chart because she's going to be gone. I call my manager. I tell him what's going on. He said, you got to lay low until I can figure this out. And so I got to stay low and I got to stay disguised because they're looking for Jamal. So now I end up changing chart, going on to the reformatory school. And now I'm the female director of a girls' reformatory school. So that's how we're trying to do it. So you don't have a lot of young folks in it this time. Yeah, a lot of young people doing a whole lot of stuff because you know I ain't able like I used to be. Huh. When is that set to drop? Oh no, we're still working on the script, story, and all of that. So it's are you, probably are you, hopefully by the end of the year. Are you executive producing that as well? Or you you got to hand in the writing and stuff? I'm going to hopefully I'm probably about 80% sure and direct it. Nice. Let me ask you this. Um, who, who, since you've been in Hollywood and since you've been in the game, have been your influences? I've seen you have a number of roles in a lot of Martins, movies, Thin Line Between Love and Hate, Martin, the series, obviously, and in life. Um, is he somebody that is a close friend of yours? What's your relationship with Martin? And who in Hollywood has kind of, um, that, that you would say kind of helped you along the way, if anybody, or who would you consider a friend in Hollywood? No one has helped me, but in Hollywood, I mean, the person who um, I think, uh, I admire was Eddie Murphy 